Hello, and welcome to Dawncasting. It's so good to finally be able to put out some more content, and I really want to offer a heartfelt thank you to all of you for the continued support. I do really enjoy making these videos, and I plan to continue doing so. Sometimes real life just gets in the way. Now without further ado, on to the topic of today's video, the Onyx Cathedral. The highly anticipated rework for the game's final zone is here, and it does not disappoint. This was my first attempt at the cathedral, and if I'm being honest, many of my decisions were motivated by fear. The devs have been wanting to make the final zone more challenging to adequately prepare players for the final boss, so I wasn't sure about what was to come. Now before we dive in, let's take a quick look at the deck so you all have a better idea of what's going on. I'm very glad I decided to record this because I happen to be doing it on one of my all-time favorite decks, the Snare Rogue. I started off with the Rapier, Singing Weapon, and Distraction, and as I played through the run, I picked up whatever I considered to be some of the stronger Snare cards. Things like Hush, Harmful Intent, and Sharp Wires are all very strong, and I of course went for the enchantment's Barbed Snares and Spin the Web to complement the playstyle. The reason I went with this particular strategy is for the easy Jinx access. Like I said, I'm already scared, but I figured if the Cathedral enemies can't play cards, I should be fine, right? I guess we'll find out. Now, I do wish I had gotten the talent Set the Scene. This is a great talent in Snare Builds because it allows for a guaranteed turn 1 Jinx if you have a memorized Hush. That being said, I did at least manage to pick up Sadistic Glee, which ended up being extremely valuable against one of the new mechanics. So now that you're all up to speed, let's see what awaits in the Onyx Cathedral. So right away, we're presented with this cuddly looking thing with Mimic in its name. Already the fear gets amplified, and I really don't want to fight anything related to a Mimic, so I just avoid it and see what this window is instead. I do skim through some of this text, but it seems like mostly lore, so I just decided to read it when I'm not recording. Now for our next three cards, despite the incredibly terrifying looking monster art, this yellow word right here is still the scariest thing to me, so it looks like we're fighting a mini-boss. After looking at the effects, I decide on the Chaos Priest, because if the Priest of Hatred buries cards, then they probably have a lot of annoying firecast garbage, and the Chaos Priest probably just buffs itself based on afflictions it has or something like that. Ah. Oh great, the effects are on me, and not them. Well, this is going to be interesting. Luckily, thanks to a fun interaction, I was able to sneak out a turn 1 Jinx, which is very helpful for getting my deck rolling. Harmful Intent will add 2 snares to their deck, and while Hush requires 3 snares to trigger the Jinx, it also adds a snare of its own, which happens before it counts the snares in the enemy's deck. Things are going pretty smoothly so far, and we just cycle through spamming snares, jinx, and snare upgrades until they start popping off for big numbers. And with that, the first mini boss is down. and it looks like that has converted one of the negative area effects into a positive one. Neat. Now, at this point, I'm very annoyed by my cards getting buried, and my number one goal right now is to kill that particular mini-boss. I didn't actually mean to take the idol here, despite the collector probably being in the zone deck and having a large amount of gold to power gold strike. I am after all playing a snare rogue, and I want to use snares, people. I do get a chance to kill the priest here, but unfortunately I can't pass up a dang opportunity. And 
That's right. I removed the idol at a campfire. Let the hate flow through you. I don't really want either of these things on the left, so let's see if this dreadlord can elude my snares. Ah, it interacts with the slay mechanic. Well, that is convenient since most of my kills are from charm thanks to spin the web, which triggers the slay effect. So this handsome fellow does manage to get a few hits in on me, but before too long the jinx and snares start to overwhelm him. I do notice towards the end of the fight that the additional blood cost on my cards is starting to take a bit of a toll. So I decided to start only playing cards that either add snares or jinx to give sadistic glee time to heal me up a bit. So at this point, I'm not regretting destroying the golden idol. I'm staring deep into Bolgar's eyes, trying to decide if I want to imbue Workshop, despite it being memorized. The Berry Priest is still out there, and I'm getting very tired of losing Workshop every fight. So in the end, I decide to go ahead and imbue it. Alright, let's see what this tough guy has to offer. For this fight, I decide to just continue the strategy from the Dreadlord and mostly play cards that either add snares, upgrade those snares, or apply Jinx in some way. Again, just to give Sadistic Glee a chance to keep me healthy. I'm a bit scared of the new Baylor, so I decide to just wrap up another guard and some snares for now. Oh, and finally my time comes to get rid of this annoying priest. Again, just sticking to the same strategy here in trying to be selective with our plays so the blood cost doesn't get too overwhelming. Thanks to the Jinx carrying us, the fight goes very smoothly. Oh look, the Mimic! Let's just look at one of these pretty windows instead. Speaking of pretty things, while I skip this lore, let's talk about the artwork, because as usual, the devs have knocked it out of the park. All of the enemies have been amazingly unique and detailed, 
and any of them would have a place in any AAA game's fantasy hellscape. I am curious about which new enemy art people like best, so make sure to leave a comment with your favorite. With that, it looks like it's time for the final mini-boss, the High Priest of Agony. Looks like we're starting with some barrier and regen after defeating the previous mini-boss, which is a nice bonus. And we get a double jinx on turn 1. Things do not look too good for this priest. On top of that, it looks like this priest has a pretty slim deck, so the snares quickly take over and win the day. Now, unfortunately, I got confused here and forgot that the Baylor is not the Dreadlord, and thinking I had already fought one of these horned baddies, I missed my chance to see their new artwork and mechanics. But I will make sure to get some Baylor footage and post it as a short on the channel in the near future, so make sure to look out for that. I do end up talking to one of these door knockers, but it seems like it's just a lot of lore, which is awesome and I love, but I'll go through it sometime when I'm not recording. Alright, and with that I have safely made it through my first attempt of the Onyx Cathedral. Now I realize I did not fight every enemy and that the Juiced Mimic in particular is probably quite annoying. But from what I did experience, it's clear to me that this is a whole new beast than the Citadel. The devs have, at least in my eyes, crafted a much more engaging final zone. And sure, I abused Jinx to cheese my way through, but even doing so, it's clear to me that there are real threats like the mini-boss effects that you will need to prepare for or you are going to slowly be worn down and defeated. Again, I want to say thank you for all the support, I do really appreciate it and I plan to keep the content coming in the future. I still have not played any of the Masks of Misery zones, and while I am vaguely aware of the more threatening mechanics because of the Discord, the playthrough video should still be very close to blind. I also remembered recently that YouTube Shorts exist, and I often post Dawncaster clips in the Discord, so I'll make sure to post them as Shorts instead so you all can have more content to enjoy. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you liked the video, make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons, and if you like annoying notifications, make sure to hit that bell icon, and I'll see you next time, Wanderers.